Hi everyone, welcome to Confidence Leads to Success with me, Elif Kese. I am bringing you a relationship expert. She is a coach and breathwork facilitator and she helps women heal their relationships with themselves so they can heal their relationship with others, with the world, with money. When it comes to money with our relationship, we seem to have a bit of an issue with it. But I have got this perfect woman who's going to share her expertise, her knowledge generously with us so we get to fix it. Hello, Olivia. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. So good to have you here. Olivia Sage is a transformational breathwork facilitator, sound healer and relationship coach. She combines her background in NLP and coaching with somatic healing practices to help people remove the root causes of stress, anxiety, self-sabotage and fear, which we seem to all have it. Olivia, how do you do that? What's the secret? I think the secret is to get to know yourself and understand uh, your own triggers, understand how you respond to things, and also a good understanding of your own nervous system, mm -hmm. knowing when to downregulate, knowing when to upregulate, really bringing yourself into balance and center. So what do we use with that breath? There's many tools and, you know, I always with my clients use many, many tools. I give them different things. And sometimes, you know, depends, depends. I think the answer is just depends, right? Uh, but the breath is one of the most powerful ones. I really, um, our breath is, you know, it's the bridge to our subconscious mind. It's bridge to our, uh, it's a mirror of our um, nervous system. So we can use the breath to understand what's happening in the body at that moment. And, you know, if you're breathing, breathing really shallow and like you're panicking and you're all over the place, like you understand that shows you that you are really overstimulated and you need to like downregulate and come back to center and ground yourself. And you can use the breath to do that too, right? Of so you can course. use two ways. And there are things that I think that, you know, a lot of people understand when they read books and watch a YouTube video, this and that, but it's important to... For me, also the embodiment practices, like really bringing it to your body with movement and expression with your voice so that, you know, the things that you learn or you hear, people know things, but it's um, the point is to apply, to embody in your day-to-day -day life. So, so embodiment is also like an important tool that I use. Well, my question comes to it, then how... How did you find yourself in this industry? What made you start this business? What made you really focus on that? The importance of it, because I truly agree with you. It is really important to have that healed relationship with ourselves. What brought you to here? <laughs> Failed relationships and a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, I think we've got two in the room. <laughs> <laughs> literally like uh yeah i i realize after um you know i have an eight-year-old and um divorced um it is that it's been three years and like five years uh you know since i broke up with him but you know like the people that trigger you the most are your best teachers mm -hmm. right uh so it was a very very tough um marriage relationship really pushing me to the edge and to the point where I was almost like losing my sense of self and I was acting and talking like a different person. I picked up so many like toxic things. Like I just didn't know. Like I developed a lot of like defense mechanisms to be able to protect myself, my heart. And I just realized, uh, I learned it the hard way that you cannot change the other person. Mm -hmm. You know, I started doing some self-development, like Teal Swan was one of the first people I started following and listening. So I started um, my yoga teacher's training, but not just as, as a physical practice, uh, you know, when you're doing the training uh, to become a teacher, also dive deep into the ancient texts. And my background is in English language and literature my college degree so I was like really fascinated by these like yoga sutras of Patanjali you know like the eight limbs of yoga like unhurting and truthfulness like all these 
values and it made me like reassess everything my whole life my whole values mm -hmm. and I realized that this person yes this is a horrible relationship was mirroring to me what I need to heal it's not about the person in my life it was about me and what I, I brought with me from my childhood from my background what I was bringing into the relationship what I was bringing to my own life so it was very very painful but at the same time I had to reframe it and understand okay he's just showing me what is all the parts that um I was rejecting or I was not accepting there was a lot of like fragmentation and I had to yeah I had to go through my whole healing journey and I realized as I went through the journey I started getting new tools like like I had yoga and then I started doing sound healing and I started teaching pranayama using the breath and um as I went through and then I did EFT uh certification so you know as I went through my journey I used tools and then I was like okay like you know I'm getting somewhere and it's working and I was like wow I changed my whole life I was very stuck in this marriage very unhappy and from outside it looked like I had everything that I'm supposed to be happy with you know I got married it's good for the books it was good for the textbook yeah. but in reality yeah, I exactly I ticked like I checked all the boxes from outside I had a master's degree the the ring the car like I, I moved to Miami the apartment like everything but I just felt so empty you know and mm. that was like my dark night of the soul and that was around um yeah six seven years ago and everything I used worked I changed my whole life and people started coming to me asking for advice did a lot of things and I was like I think like uh so I found my purpose through this basically right Going I through love that you just turned your mess into your medicine to help others oh I love the way you put it but yeah. it is true I mean I I love um because a lot of people I know and someone who has been divorced myself I know sometimes as you're going through it you feel like you're in it and you will never get out of it and and i love that you found the courage in yourself and confidence in yourself to actually go within to find a solution rather than start, sit there and blame others and that that change that transformation when when you, when it becomes from within that's mm -hmm. when it's very transformational and yeah. i i I bow you for that. Bravo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's amazing. The years of each other, you went through your own journey and, yeah. you know, to be able to see that, recognize that, I'm sure like, you know, you have it in you too. So I mm. want, yeah. So I want you to talk about a bit more of the embodiment. I hear this word a lot, the embodiment of your, I, could you open that up a bit? What does that exactly mean? What do you mean why, when you say that you become the embodiment of blah, blah, blah? What does that mean? Yeah, like I think it's easier to explain with, a, for example, there's archetypes from Jung, right? So there's the archetype of the, the, we have the child and we have the goddess and the queen, like we have different archetypes and we all go through like these journeys and we all embody different things at different stages in our life like especially for women it's important to understand like what stage of life are you in right there's a stage where we are uh, having kids and creating families there's a stage where we're focused on business so for example let's say the queen archetype embodying the queen archetype right that's where I am right now I feel like this is you know where I am stepping into stepping forward to uh Let's say the queen, for example, versus uh, the virgin, right? So the queen knows, let's say, there's time for everything, right? If you are manifesting something and you're being just like impatient, oh, why is this not coming? Everybody has it. I don't have it. Comparison and feeling like you're do like you're like there's something wrong with you and you're broken and you mm. like you're like I want it now. Like like the queen knows that there's time for everything. Like the queen understands the queen has like clarity of patience. like what she actually wants patience and yeah. discernment right like boundaries like there are certain qualities of a queen and so embodiment is you can read about it in a book right 
and be like yeah that makes sense and then the next day go and like throw a tantrum because you're not getting what you want from your partner or you're getting impatient with your child or like whatever right so embodiment is just like not only knowing that in your brain but also like living it like waking up and really stepping into it right so the for example when you create a new habit right let's say um when you create a habit like 21 days 40 days whatever it takes and it just becomes second nature you stop thinking about it and you just do it right like you you wake up and you brush your teeth for example so if you like have it stuck and say i'm when I, every time i brush my teeth i'm gonna do breath work right and then you have to think about it in the first maybe 20 days one month 40 days whatever it takes but then you don't think about it anymore you just get up and do it it becomes your second nature so so that's embodiment Mm, I love it being it (laughs) being it being it I love it just be what you wish (laughs) become it I always say um the confidence um some people are born with it some people work on it and and I sometimes say you can fake it till you become it so you can just (laughs) you can just fake it till you become it I love it so what are the so what are the the processes because it's so difficult to create Mm. new habits around our everyday life that we feel is already stacked up with so many responsibilities and if you were to add new habits like something like activating breath work to your daily daily life or meditation or even just 15 minutes of walk or some type of physical exercise yoga or plates how could somebody really slowly introduce it so it becomes their embodiment? Right. I think one of the biggest uh, reasons why people fail when they do this, like, you know, like the new, re- new year resolutions, right? Like it's like 80, I think the number is 86% of them fail. Okay. In all. Yeah. Because I think people tend to get uh, really excited and that too high like high goals like it's too much right Mm -hmm. so instead of like if somebody says i want to start walking an hour every day like i love that you said 15 minutes because when somebody says i'm gonna walk for an hour every single day that's pretty like one hour can be long like it's a lot of time like for me as a single mom who's running a business and i'm doing like breath work in person like i have a lot going on i cannot just add one hour of something new into my life Mm -hmm. but I can maybe add a 10 minute walk right or 10 minute breath work so I think setting expect like uh, um expectations that you can actually do because like when we set up high expectations Mm -hmm. or like really big goals and we don't get to them it really breaks your self-confidence it really breaks your trust to yourself and you don't want to do it anymore. You don't want to even try to add a new habit. And I think it uh, starts with self-forgiveness, like really understanding like and forgiving yourself for all the previous failures before you can actually even set a new goal, add a new habit. Um, because every time you do and you don't keep your promise to yourself, you break your own, like it affects yourself. Your own promise your own promise to yourself isn't it when you break your own promise to yourself that's when you feel a bit lacking of confidence I would say set attainable goals Mm -hmm. even if you do two minutes breath work if you if you're a chest breather like if you don't know how to like if you're not breathing at all and you do two minutes that's gonna change and you're gonna like it and you're gonna extend it maybe one minute a week people just like to do it like 10 start with 10 minutes and then do 20 minutes the next day and then they go like they right so just being just start very small and whenever you set a habit like you get it and I think it's important to stay there until you embody it before you even increase it for even a minute you just need to kind of like savor like let it through let it be part of you before you raise the bar I love it. It's just like getting um, getting trained for marathon. You don't just run thirty miles, do you? You just run, you just run five kilometers and then add every day and keep mm-hmm. building up. So it's great tip. Thank you. Well, I'm going to go back to relationships because I know so many people are dealing with issues in their relationships. Let it 
with their romance partner, let it be with their friends or with their family members or their, even their children. So you talk about polarity in relationships. Could you yeah. open that up a bit? Yes. Yeah, so polarity is, I'm talking about the masculine, feminine, opposite um, dynamics. Mm -hmm. And so masculine and feminine energies, they're just a uh, polarity is just energies. And these energies, whether you're a man or woman, we have both within us. It's just the nature of the universe, right? We have the sun and the moon, day and the light. Everything has this opposite. And I think that like when they talk about like the, um, you know, when they talk about manifestation, they always say like, you have to become it, to attract it, you have to be it. But like, there's something about relationships that doesn't apply because the opposites, like, you know, like the battery, like opposites also attract. So creating this polarity, this opposition in relationships actually keep the relationships alive and juicy and interesting. And it's something that a lot of people lose very fast. So creating um, creating the polarity in a relationship requires you to create it within yourself, like the balance within yourself of the masculine and the feminine. So, for example, if I'm when I'm working, I'm setting goals and I'm creating schedules, and you know when I'm working on my business, I have to kind of tap into my masculine, right? And um, but when I go and like let's say meet my boyfriend, I need to kind of like you know, leave the masculine there in the office and kind of embody my feminine mm -hmm. because I want to attract, especially, for example, a masculine man, right? So I have to know when to tap into which, uh, which energies. I need to be a master of my own energetic body so that I know I can use each one of them with any area of your life, you can use it. Manifestation, business, relationships. It's very important to understand how energy works and how to tap into which one and when. Mm, that's great. That's a great tip you shared there because being in control of our emotions and our feeling is actually really powerful. That creates clarity of what we want and when is the right time to want it. Mm -hmm. It is really important. So um, I'm going to ask you about how, what are the processes that you help your clients to go through this process? Mm -hmm. the, the, the finding the embodiment or, or, um, or healing their relationship with themselves. What are the processes? Where, do, where are they and where do you take them to? so usually i start with what is holding them back right mm -hmm. before we get to where we're going we need to figure out why are we stuck mm -hmm. so i start with a deep deep dive into you know all the limiting beliefs they have about themselves because the way you feel about yourself the way you um see yourself changes everything like your relationship with you affects creates all the relationships like i mentioned with the money and uh you know other people the world you know everything and so i start by digging deep into what is holding them back the limiting beliefs especially the beliefs they have about themselves the limitations they put on themselves the stories they created because of their experiences um so we start there and then we start unpacking these and then we start processing and understanding that these are actually not truths. These are all the stories we created because of certain beliefs and certain experiences, things that happened to us. And from there, uh, I usually create, in for, especially for my one-on-one -on -one clients, a, a plan, a three-month plan. So, you know, like we have goals for the first month, second month, third month. And where they go is usually uh, a very detailed like good understanding of who they are and what they want mm -hmm. like absolute clarity because we a lot of us think that we want this and that and then we get them and we're still not happy and we get the next thing and we're still not happy we get the next thing and we're still not happy because all the things we want usually if you don't have that self-awareness if you don't do that sur internal surgery you think you want things but it's all put on us 
through our parents, society, media. So it's just peeling those layers of like inauthenticity and getting to the core of yourself, the core of your heart, your, your intuition, your own wisdom and understanding mm -hmm. who you are, what you want, like getting to really know yourself, create a relationship with yourself. And then from that, you attract your partner then you're going to have a much bigger success in creating a healthy, long-lasting, like deep connection relationship. Beautiful. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. It's because it's a, I think you are so right. So many people end up doing so many courses, so many programs, and they do, they get into relationship, wrong relationship without even knowing what they truly want, who they truly are. And that, then no wonder they are not happy. You see right. a lot of people who seem to have it all, like you've explained, and who seems to have have all the success, all the wealth and all the beauty, but they're still not happy because they're not really living who they are here for. They're just living in the eyes of the society and the eyes of other people. So I love it. Thank you so much for sharing this it's mm -hmm. so good i feel like there is a book coming out of you there a book a book that that the way you speak and talk about finding mm -hmm. that that um the journey to yourself and the, the relationship to yourself it's almost like i'm actually working on a book but yeah i, I have so much on my plate that like it's not my priority but definitely one day yeah amazing i think it would be a really good read thank you so much olivia it's been an absolute pleasure having you but i'm gonna ask you last question as does this confidence leads to success interview i'm going to ask you what does confidence mean to you hmm i think confidence means just trusting myself you know, being able to quiet the noise that's outside of like the other people's opinions of myself and not being scared of being judged or like caring about that, just being able to quiet that outside noise and being just so connected to my own intuition, my heart and leading from that. Love it. Listen to your heart, ladies. Olivia Sage, thank you so much. Thank you pleasure my pleasure thank you for having me thank you ladies for tuning in i will leave all the information how to get in touch with olivia so you get to work with her see her magic on her socials her website she is absolutely incredible um and i will see you on the next episode thank you bye <laughs>